welcome back to History 2.0. Today we will t be talking about Wild Bill Hickok. Uh, his real name was James Butler H Hickok, um, and his birth date was May 27th, 1837, and he was born in Troy Grove, Illinois. He died on August 2nd, 1876, in Deadwood in the Dakota Territories. Um, he spent most of his life as a scout, a lawman, a cattle rustler, a gunslinger, gambleman, a showman, and an actor. He was born and raised on a farm in Illinois, um, and his parents were William Alonzo Hickok and his wife Polly Butler. He was uh, of English ancestry, and he was the fourth of six children. His father was an abolitionist and is said to have used the house as a stop for the Underground Railroad. Um, and his father passed around when he was around 15 years old. Um, his father was adamant that his boys know, knew how to shoot a gun, and James became rather a good gunsman. Um, and he was renowned locally for his shot. And in 1855, at the age of 18, he fled his home state and moved to Leavenworth, Kansas, and joined the Jayhawkers. It was an anti-slavery vigilante group um, in the new territory in the era of the Bleeding Kansas. Uh, while he was there being a Jayhawker, uh, he met 12-year-old William Cody, um, later to be known as Buffalo Bill. Uh, they both served as scouts for the U.S. Army during the Utah War. He used his father's name, William Hickok, until the end of the American Civil War, and in 1857, he claimed a 160-acre tract in Johnson County, Kansas. Um, and in 1859, he joined the Russell Majors and Waddle Freight Company, um, the parent company of what we know now as the Pony Express. In 1860, on the way to New Mexico, driving a freight team, uh, to Santa Fe, he was attacked by a bear and two cubs blocking the path. He was bedridden for about four months to heal and sent to Rock Creek Station to work on after recovery so he could still make money. Um, on July 12, 1861, David Mc McCantles went to Rock Creek Station office, office to demand um, overdue property payment from Horace Wellman, the station manager. Um, McCandles threatened Wellman and he shot and killed McCandles and both Wellman and Hickok were tried for killing McCandles but they were let go on self-defense charges. Um, after the war broke out in April of 1861, Hickok moved out to Sedalia Cetalina, Missouri. Um, he got a job there as a teamster for the Union Army and soon moved up to be a wagon master. Uh, but in September of 1862, he was discharged for unknown reasons. In, the late, eight, in late 1863, he worked as a marshal for the Springfield, Missouri detectives. Uh, while in Springfield, Hickok and a local gambler, Davis Tutt, had several disagreements over unpaid debts. Hickok had lost a special golden watch to Tut in a poker game, and um, the watch had great sentimental value to Hickok, so we asked that Tut not wear it in public. But when he saw Tut wearing it on July 21st, 1865, the two men faced off in the Springfield Town Square. It was a quick draw duel, and Tut's shot missed while Hickok hit him in the chest, and Tut collapsed and died. Um, two days later, he was arrested for murder, and he was let go on a $2,000 bail. In September of 1865, Hickok was elected Deputy, Deputy Marshal of Springfield. Um, in this term, he was labeled as an irreverent hater of the Native American people, and he was a scout for General George A. Custer. Um, in December of 1867, Hickok had come to stay in the city of Hayes City, Kansas, and he became deputy marshal and uh, lived and worked until about April 15th, 1871, when he became a marshal in Abilene, Kansas, head marshal in Abilene, Kansas. 
And then late in October of 1871, Hickok killed a saloon owner named Phil Coe for inciting a former Elias Ben Thompson to try to kill him. Um, and then Hickok later in November 18th of 1871 met Agnes Thatcher Lake at the time who was 45 years old. He was about 30 and she was a circus performer and they continued to correspond until March 5th, 1876 when they were married in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, he would later write just before his death that he would whisper her name with his last breath, which shows just how much he loved her. Um, on August 1st, 1876, Hickok was playing poker at Nuttall and Mann Saloon number 10 in Deadwood, Dakota Territories, when a man named Jack McCall sat down to play and he lost to Hickok very heavily. When Hickok told McCall to quit, he took it as an insult, and the next day, while Hickok was playing poker with his back to the door, which he usually didn't sit that way, he sat with his back to the wall, uh, McCall shot Hickok in the back of the head at point-blank range, and he was holding two pairs of black eights and two aces. The bullet that went um, through Hickok's head uh, went through his left cheek, and hit another player in the arm and then McCall was later lynched after a trial in Yankton, Dakota Territory on March 1st, 1877. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening.